What's up guys, Nito here, and welcome back. This is going to be a day one update for my League Start build, which is a Fire Tornado Chieftain using the new uh, Transfigured Tornado Gem, Tornado of Elemental Turbulence. And I'm just going to do a quick map real quick and show you what it looks like. I am currently level 86, and the build's been pretty fun so far, so check it out. So you can have three tornadoes with the new skill. Um, and you don't need to charge it up at all with projectiles or anything like that. So uh, it's basically a, a main skill version of tornado as opposed to uh, sort of a utility skill. Boss right there. Alright, so that's kind of what the new tornado looks like for mapping on a chieftain. And as you can see, it has pretty nice clear, um, mainly just because the tornadoes just move around on their own. And then with Chieftain, you get those explosions uh, and it just kind of deletes entire packs at once, which is really nice. Um, so let's get into what we're actually doing here. Um, the main thing, so I'll show my skills. I'm on a five link right now, but this is Tornado of Elemental Turbulence. So that's our main skill. Um, I was able to actually pick this up pretty early on in like Act 7, I grabbed one for like 4 Chaos, that was 20% quality. Um, and then I kind of leveled throughout the campaign, the rest of the campaign using this skill. So um, it was actually pretty, fairly smooth leveling. Um, up until Act 7, I was using a Ethereal Knives setup with 
Holy Flame totem, um, and that was also pretty nice for leveling. You basically kind of rush over to like this area, you fully convert to fire, you pick up like some fizz mastery stuff, you pick up uh, skills cost life instead of 30% of mana and tireless, which kind of fixes all your mana costs, and it also enables this physical mastery um, to get extra physical damage from skills that cost life. So this little cluster of nodes here early on in the campaign was very nice for leveling on a Marauder um, as a spell build. So I, I was spelled the whole time. I didn't really level as an attack build or anything else. Um, so that's pretty nice. Uh, the other things we're doing here. So our Ascendancy, we are doing Velakos which is going to make our max fire res apply to max hold and lightning. So you can see I have 85 max res, all res right now. Um, I'm also stacking some endurance charges. And we, so we have five endurance charges currently, and then we're using the war cry mastery with deep breaths and the, what's it called? Uh, call to arms port, where is it? Um, but we have Call to Arms with Enduring Cry, which is going to give us Endurance Charges and additional uh, physical damage reduction per Endurance Charge. Um, and that is on, I think it's about a four second cooldown. Yeah, it's like exactly a four second cooldown, which means that every four seconds we get the nice little healing from Enduring Cry. And then we get um, all of our uh, Endurance Charges. And because we have the minimum power, minimum 10 power, it means you can generate endurance charges even when there's no enemies nearby. So you can see my endurance charges just keep resetting every four seconds. Um, and that's also really great when com uh, combined with Immortal Call because Immortal Call is going to consume your endurance charges and then make you take way less damage. So um, that little combo has been very nice for just being pretty tanky. And the extra physical damage reduction pairs nicely with the all the elemental max res that we have. Uh, so that's kind of the main defenses of the build. Um, so you get recovery, you get fizz, fizz damage reduction. And then, you know, over here we're taking some max res on the tree. Um, corrupting blood immunity, stun immunity. And then, you know, we have plus one max res from having armor in all our slots. And over here, we just do some aura stuff with, um, we are running Purity of Fire. And that's giving us a bunch of max fire res, which then gets converted into max cold and max lightning. And ideally, we will also be able to get some additional max res on other pieces of gear. So we can actually cap out at 90, re um, 90 max res for this build, which is going to be great. Just not quite there yet. Um... The other thing with Tornado, so Tornado is a prismatic skill, which means that normally it summons a random element tor Tornado, but I am using the Combat Focus Jewels, which is going to disable Cold and Lightning. So if I take these out, um, if I take those out, now you can see there's a Lightning Tornado, there's a Cold Tornado, Lightning, Fire, so now it's random, right? So you you really want to disable those other elements for this build because a we're scaling fire damage um and the main the main thing that we're scaling here is actually herald of ash um so we're using circle of anguish with herald of ash buff effects as well as some extra max fire res while you're affected by herald of ash um herald of ash is where is it really really strong for any physical fire conversion build because it's going to give you is as extra fire damage and then it's also going to give you more spell fire damage so you're getting double the benefit of this skill um and if you scale the buff effect it's going to scale both the fizz as extra fire and the more spell fire damage uh so that's a really strong combo so we anoint discord artisan over here which is giving us um increased buff effect and then also increased damage per herald so we're also running herald of purity which is not as strong as Herald of Ash, but it's still pretty good. Um, it's giving us, what is it, 12% more physical damage. Um, so that's pretty good. And then, yeah, com just combined with the up to 60% buff effect on this ring is really strong. Um, other damage stuff. So we're using double replica cold iron point right now. 
and those give plus three to all cold spell kill uh spell skill gems and tornado as you can see at the top basically has like every single skill tag on there um so it's fire cold lightning physical orb aoe duration spell like there's so many ways to scale levels on this thing um that because we're not dealing cold damage but it is a cold spell skill replica cold iron point is very strong for that so we get easy plus six levels there um however ultimately the build is going to be using annihilating light which is the triple damage staff that um really the whole reason of going chieftain is because you get this node here which is going to convert or uh, it's going to add uh cold and lightning resist or, uh, resistance based on half your fire res so that gives you a bunch of free resistance basically and the annihilating light staff uh has a really big downside which is that it multiplies all your resistances by i think 0.4 it's like 60 percent reduced resistances um so you really need a lot of extra resistance if you want to run that triple damage staff but it will ultimately if we can get there it will ultimately be much higher damage than double cold iron point um so that's kind of the goal of the build but this is where we're at right now on day you know it's like roughly 24 hours after league start so it's day two now um yeah other things we're doing so like fire mastery 100 percent damage with hits against ignited enemies we are running combustion currently so um you can also do like ellie focus on tornado because obviously we don't really care about the ignite damage we just care about um the hit damage of tornado and then you can run com combustion on like wave of conviction or some other skill i just found that it was nice to have the automat uh, like automated ignites um just applying combustion and then giving us that 100 percent increased damage um our other links are intensify support so actually somebody pointed out to me that with tornado you can actually snapshot the intensify so Basically, the way Intensify works is like when you cast, you get an intensity buff. And the more you cast without moving, the more the buff stacks up. And when you move, it, the buff goes away. And basically, the way the way it works is the, the lower this number is, the more AoE you get from Intensify support. And then the higher the number is, the more area damage it deals. So at four, um, I think each stack deals up to like 14% more damage. So it's like a very strong support if you um use it for like if you just stand there and casting like cast in place you're gonna do your tornadoes are gonna do a lot of damage and because tornado has a duration you can then move around and lose the buff but the tornado you summoned will still have the the damage right so like when there's a tanky enemy you just stand there summon tornadoes and then you can run around and then for the full duration of that tornado it's going to basically get like keep the damage buff right but then when you are actually clearing you kind of want the extra aoe so th that's kind of the nice thing is intensify gives you both right it gives you clear and it gives you single target so that is also why we're pathing like all the way over here is to just pick up this caster mastery i may end up dropping this i'm not sure this is entirely needed for the build um yes this is like 14% more damage, which is nice, but it's like one, two, three, four, five, six points to get it. And all the points on the on the way, like cast speed, is really just quality of life. Like because of the way tornado works, it has a fixed hit rate. So you can see it deals damage every 0.25 seconds. And basically there's no way to increase that um that hit rate. So cast speed just like determines how quickly you summon the tornado, but it doesn't determine how much damage the actual tornado does so you don't really benefit that much from investing into cast speed which is another reason why i went with chieftain because like yeah chieftain doesn't really get any access to cast speed but it doesn't really need it either um so i may end up dropping this and like doing something else else with it um some of the other things I wanted to do is like use a cluster setup here, um, specifically a Warcry cluster, because Warcry can give you Onslaught every time you Warcry, or if you've Warcried recently, I believe it is, uh, or it might be in the past eight seconds, I forget. But if it's if it's when you Warcry recently, because our, our 
automated war cries every four seconds, it should be able to keep Onslaught up all the time, um, automatically, which is very strong. And then there's also some other really nice war cry cluster stuff. Like you can get armor, you can get um, other charges. So like frenzy charges would be really nice to have. Um, all just from from war crying. And um, I was planning on doing like a multiple war cry setup for this build until they kind of changed how the call to arms uh, support works at the last second, like everybody was kind of expecting it to work with multiple, to be able to trigger multiple uh, war cries at the same time. And it would have been really nice to be able to trigger Infernal Cry because that's going to give you Covered and Ash, which is a nice damage buff for any fire skill. Um, and it would also help a little bit with clear, although we don't really need it that much. But um, yeah, so it would have been nice to have that, but it turns out that unfortunately Cult Arm support is only able to work with a single uh, war cry at a time, and I did test that. Um, so that's a bummer. The other thing I tested is that the recover 15% of life when you use a war cry does not work when it's automated. Um, I guess when you, the, the specifically the wording when you use a war cry is specific to like self casting it basically. Like it just doesn't work with triggered war cries. But uh, when the wording when you war cry does work so see how the mastery remove all damaging ailments when you war cry that should work with an automated version i haven't tested it but it should work based on that wording um so other other things that are worded that way should work um but if it says when you use like the word use is the spe specific word you've got to look out for that won't work um and yeah so just like kind of the other gear that i'm working with you know, pretty basic, straightforward day one gear, just some rares, um, just some cast speed and regen and stuff on the amulet. It's not a very good amulet. Uh, plus two socketed gems, unset ring for our period of fire. Once this hits level 21, the, the plus two on the ring is going to add an extra max fire res. So that's important to have those extra plus two levels. You want a level 23 uh, purity of fire. I mean, there's other ways to get that, but th this is just kind of an easy way. Um, our gloves, ignore the implicits. I'm still working on them, trying to get like unnerve on hit and fire leech on there. Uh, so this is mainly just for, you know, chaos res, strength, life, etc. Pretty basic rare gear for day one. These are actually pretty good. I got uh, a nice unveil on there from pair of boots that dropped from a June mission, but um, the Onslaught on here is ultimately probably not going to be that useful because, again, I can get Onslaught from a Warcry cluster boot. So that's kind of where I'm where I'm headed next with, with that. Um, yeah, and then the rest of the skills are just like Heralds, Immortal, Castle of Damage Taken, Purity of Fire, Frostblink for movement. Um, our other links are for Tornado, our Fire Pen, inspiration we want to reduce that mana cost as much as possible combustion and then intensify um and then probably eventually we'll have like added fire um as our sixth link or maybe ellie focus actually you know you probably just you could swap a combustion like i said before you can swap combustion for ellie focus um yeah so that's kind of our main setup there and then we just have like wave of conviction, flammability, debuff stuff. I am running clarity, like a low level clarity right now. Um, ultimately, I would really like to get rid of this and then uh, run determination, but that's going to require an enlighten. And currently, my mana situation, I don't have enough like regen to sustain clarity or uh, to, to sustain without clarity. I mean, um, like right now, I can just kind of cast repeatedly and and never run out of mana but if i drop clarity then uh i will eventually run out of mana and it just kind of I'm, I'm still working on fixing the regen there um but we should be able to get there eventually and then you know we just have cold arms and during cry increased duration and it should be possible with this setup to get the duration of enduring cry to last four seconds so like the buff duration that gives extra physical damage reduction per endurance charge 
So you see the base duration is two seconds. So you need a hundred percent increased. So you get a bunch from the support. Um, but if you can get that to four seconds, that means you have that buff up 100% of the time, which is really strong. Um, so that's kind of the goal there. And that's kind of the reason that we need the extra cooldown recovery from deep breaths is just so we have 100% um, uptime there. Um, yeah, and then we are doing Iron Will. So like all this strength that we have does not go to waste. We have like over 600 strength now. Um, you know, we're doing utmost might as well for some extra strength. And yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. So it's been going well. I am looking forward to continuing to play the build and hopefully get into red maps soon. I'm in like tier nine or 10 maps at the moment. Um, so soon. All right. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.